Hey guys, Chris, Ironhead Garage. Well, working on this wiring still. It's getting this cluster all wired up so you can see it there. I got all the bulbs, all the dash bulbs. I got the front parking lights, the amber ones I'm going to put in there on them clear lenses. I got the double filament brake lights. I got some, uh, the clock light, the courtesy lights. Yeah, they don't give that stuff away. It's about 50 bucks in bulbs or more. Crazy how much they want for those. But I've been over here soldering <clears throat> this uh, dash cluster up. you got to make some pigtails. And I just run my old soldering iron in my vise. Because it's hard to do with two hands. Sometimes they got that uh, little uh, roach clips. Or uh, alligator clips. Not roach clips now. Alligator clips that you uh, solder wires up. Helps you hold them. But <clears throat> I do it that way. So I got a couple grounds I got to hook up on this cluster here. And I got to tighten up my fuel gauge. Here's the little pigtail I had to make to go to the, the all the other lights. So I got all the bulbs. So I'm going to lace this stuff better, tighten it up. I did zip tie it all up, but there's the instructions. So this kit comes with the for 55 or 56 cluster is the same. Except the fuel gauge is uh, different. I'm not sure what gauge this is. If it's a 56 or a 57. Or a 56, I'm sorry. Or 55. But it comes with the instruction booklet for a uh, 57. You need to know how to wire that. comes with a harness for the Electro Speedo. But I won't be using none of that. So, I'm going to uh, get these wires kind of tidied up a little bit better actually got a ignition wire here 12 volt power wire it's supposed to go to the temperature gauge but since I'm not running that temperature gauge I just uh, shrink wrapped it up and zipped it tied it up here for maybe future if I ever do change it and put a gauge in there but yeah it all should just plug right in once I get them all tidied up so we're probably gonna just stick that in there I might get some different dash trim get rid of this 56 dash trim I got a buddy who might send me some and uh, we'll change this out before I tighten that all up but yeah I even got light bulbs for my gauges so that's cool this wiring is fun it takes it's time consuming I did get a, an overflow tube for my uh, for my radiator so I got that no big deal but another piece of the puzzle and the drain goes down there, down below. I did get uh, two gallons of antifreeze, the concentrated stuff, and uh, I got a jug of brake fluid. Yeah, me and the wife can spend some quality time together on them brakes. So, we get back on this old girl, and see how far I can get. All right, guys, here we go. Well, I haven't put this in yet, but I did get it uh, all laced up nice and tight. All the way around. And the white wire is my tack. So I got to stick that down through the, the dash over there to that old sun tack. And when I wire that up, this is the gen light. So that should come on when I uh, kick the key on. And then when you start it, it goes off. But I'm going to... Uh, plug in my head my headlight switch and I think before I put this cluster in there I need to restore that gauge you can see it not the gauge but the the bezel piece there so I'm gonna pop that ignition out and then uh, paint that up and make it look nice like the lighter one and the rest of these guys prettier up a little bit then I can plug that guy in and I got this ground here that's got to go to the cluster I got this other ground I got to hook up somewhere down below. So, I'm going to get on restoring that guy. We'll see how it comes out. Yeah, she's kind of ugly now. You can buy these for about 15 bucks, but then you got to wait a week and spend 15 bucks, and that one's original. Yeah, almost, well, over 65 years old. So, we're going to keep that old school as cool, boys. All right. Hey, guys, I kind of wanted to come back and show you if you never mess with one of these ignitions on how to get the, the lock mechanism out you got to have the key though so 
get your key in there. And that's locked, so you put it one notch back. Get yourself a paper clip. And there's, there's a hole right there on the top. There's one on the bottom too, but the one on the top. Get that paper clip in there. I can do this with one hand. You'll feel a little, there's a little button in there. Wiggle it around. So you feel it release. Hard to do with one hand. But there it is. Then it pops right on out. Set that guy there. And then the takes a special tool to get that uh, ring off of there to tighten the ignition. So this is that tool right there for tri fives. I know it works for a 55. I'm not sure. I mean, you could make one. Not very hard to make. If you had a piece of pipe, you could cut those out, those little teeth out. But then you can get it on there and uh, untighten it and tighten it back up when you're done. Or you can use a hammer and a screwdriver and beat the hell out of it. But uh, it's definitely worth getting one of these tools. They're pretty cheap. I think it was like 15 bucks or something. Got a little roll pin in there for a handle. And then when you want to put this uh, key back in there, your tumbler, just put your key in there, stick it in, in the lock, and turn it. So what's cool about the old 55 ignition, if you turn it on, you take your key out. Yeah. Then when you're at the show or something, you leave your keys out of the car, but you want to come back and move the car or whatever, you can move the car. Yeah, pretty cool. So, I'm going to get this out. i got to do that again now. Get this out and restore that bezel. Alright guys, just wanted to show you guys that. Alright, well, while this piece is drying, I painted it up. We'll uh, start something else. Give that a chance to dry. So, I'm going to open up another bag. See what do we got now? We got engine kit. Letter J bag. Oh yeah, she's a fat one. Oh, well, let's dig that guy out. Well, I got that letter J bag opened up, and it's saying I got to do the mega fuse first, and that's this big guy here. Double big fuse. Got a big crossover in it. So the main battery off the starter post goes to, from the starter post goes to here. And then the main harness from the fuse box goes to one leg. And then the other leg goes to the alternator. So this guy, that's the harness for the coming off the fuse box that goes through the motor. Nice and long stuff. So here's that guy here. The Mega Fuse. So you come off the battery. The battery goes to the starter solenoid. Then from the starter solenoid, it goes to the Mega Fuse. It's got the crossover. The metal bar in there. That uh, makes both ends hot. And then the one leg of the Mega Fuse goes to the alternator and then the other leg of the mega fuse goes to the main fuse panel feed so that'll light up the whole fuse box so it's gonna try to hide it away I was gonna put it up here it's got the covers but then that big fat power wire would uh, come hanging down and the other power wire would be there and another wire would be there I'm trying to hide all these wires, so I'm going to put it right down there, right next to that red cable there. I'm going to uh, bolt it right to the firewall there, so then I'll probably um, drill the back of the tunnel back there and put a grommet, and that main feed wire will come in from there, and then go to the mega fuse down below, be pretty much hidden away. And then I'll have to have one coming up here, coming across the manifold probably, and then to the 
back of the alternator right here. So I'm going to get on this, run this guy, and then I'll get to that other bag of goodies. All right, I'm on. Well, I mounted that mega fuse on the outside of the tow board there. I put uh, four of those button head Allen bolts. <clears throat> They're just long enough. Put some good nuts on them. Got the heater burning. Trying to keep it warm in here. Put a snake underneath this pig. So that's where I mounted it right there. Yeah, pretty good. So the jumper wire will go from the starter solenoid. I'll zip tie it to this main power wire. It'll come down here and loop around and then probably go to the far side. I think uh, it'll be better over here. Either side it lights up both of these mega fuses and one of these will go to the alternator and one of these will feed the fuse panel. So I got the lead made here. I crimped them and soldered them up. Same on that side. One's a little bigger than the other. Post on the starter's bigger. So I'm going to mount this guy on there and uh, do some more stuff. Yeah, nothing but fun, guys. All right. All right, well, I made that alternator lead. I was going to come up from the mega fuse and come up uh, on the intake manifold here but and come around, but I didn't like the look of that. So I wrapped it with the cloth tape, the friction tape, went through there, put a grommet in my frame, came out the back side with that grommet, then it goes, you can see it, it goes back there, loops around, goes to that mega fuse right there with the black cloth tape all the way. So, pretty trick. Didn't like it up there on the motor anyway. So that looks way better. Yeah, I don't like all them colored wires up here, so we're gonna wrap a bunch of them with that black cloth tape, make them look good. Got the rubber boot on there. Well, on to something else now. Got them oldies playing again. All right, guys, I'll be back. Well, guys, got that alternator wire all done. So now I can uh, start on this J package. And this one has a brown alternator wire. If you're running a three wire alternator, you need that. But I got a one wire alternator, so I deleted that wire. I got a water temperature, oil pressure gauge. I'll probably loop that up and put it underneath the dash for uh, some time in the future ever. Probably won't need it though. And I got a pink wire that goes to my uh, resistor ballast. Ignition ballast resistor because I got a Mallory distributor and I got to have that Got a, a white tack wire got to need that and I got electric choke wire and I'll probably keep that so I already deleted the alternator wire So if they just unplug you get the little screwdriver and get them out of that plug-in but this video is getting kind of long already over 10 minutes and uh, I'm gonna do a little de demonstration before I uh, shut this video down so some of you guys want to go and buy them Chinese uh, wiring kits not a good idea so this black wire here is what would come in there this is like Napa wire it's shiny and this is the American Auto wire painless speedway same kind of wire so let's see what happens to the cheap wire when you torch it Look at that, catches on fire. Burn your car down. Let's do the American Auto Wire. Does not burn. You spend all your time and all your hard earned muddy blood, sweat, and tears building one of your cool old hot rods and put one of these uh, cheap Chinese wiring kits in them. One short, rubbing on the frame somewhere. Looks, well, look what it does. No good. So, save your money up. You're building a badass old hot rod like this one.
put a quality wiring harness in it. Alright guys, just kind of wanted to show you guys that. Some guys don't know about it. Well, we'll end this video. I appreciate all you guys watching. We'll get back on it. I'm going to start lacing some more wires. Take it easy. Have a good one. Appreciate you.